once tried as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When the Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water, whoever drinks the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water. So the so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you had you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ. Is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Now, why did I choose to um, do the woman at the well? It's not because she went through a lot of men, but it's because of the truth that she brought out about the fact of the sins that she was doing. That's why I chose the woman at the well to um, help it enlighten this teaching because sometimes we can get off track to the point where we are so busy picking up everybody else's mess that we don't see our own mess. And the Bible says that this woman had a conversation. And the thing about the well, which they call Jacob's well, that was the well where people would gather at to get water. And at this well is usually the well where people would talk about people. You see what I'm saying? People come together to talk about people, and it's not always in a good way. Jesus already knew that this woman was an outcast, and guess what? This woman herself, they didn't give her a name. They just said the Samaritan one. Um, this woman herself, she knew she was an outcast because of the things that she was doing. Because of the people that she had been with, the men that she had been with, she already knew how people looked at her. That's why she showed up to the well when it wouldn't be busy, when when nobody would be around. But the thing I'm trying to tell you, if you want to get to the heart of the matter or why you're always thinking this and you're always thinking that, have a conversation with Jesus. Have a conversation with Jesus because one thing that this, these scriptures teach us is that when she begins to have a conversation with him, she didn't just have a conversation with him. She engaged real deeply with him. And as she engaged with, in the conversation with Jesus, he began to reveal things about herself. 
he began to reveal things about her to her. And she was asking questions. And when he began to reveal these things, that's when she began to speak the truth, that she was the woman that had been with the different men, that had five husbands and none of them was hers, and and that was, and the one she was with now wasn't even hers. She admitted where she was at in her life. And sometimes we get so caught up at by comparing ourselves to what everyone else has, what everyone else is doing, till we lose the true focus on our own lives. We lose our own relationship with Christ. We lose our own business because we're too busy in everybody else's business. Yes, they may want to put you in it, but there comes a time when you got to step back and say, no, that ain't my call. That ain't my conversation. I can't get deep with you on this. Because if I get deep with you on this conversation here, where is it going to lead me to? See, the thing about the conversation that the Samaritan woman had with Jesus, it led to revelation. It showed her who she was. What is some of the conversations that you're having now with people? What is that showing you about who you are? How many times have you sat up there and entertained when somebody was talking about somebody negatively? And you just sat there and took it in. And the next thing you know, now these thoughts is running in your mind. Are they talking about me like that? You know, so you got to get to a point in your life where instead of allowing people to dump on you, you have to have some boldness about you and stop it. This woman did not know that was Jesus that she was talking to. For all she knew, he was just a street man coming up asking for some water. And she already knew that I'm not allowed to give the Jews any water. You're different from me. We're not supposed to be the same. We're not supposed to drink out of the same cup. She knew that also. How many times have you found yourself in a situation where you have showed up with somebody? Um, It could be at your job or maybe it was filling out an application or something, and you walked in that door and you looked at them people and said, oh, they ain't going to approve me. I can tell by the way they look. They're not going to approve me for this car. They're not going to approve me by this house. Look at that attitude face they already got. Some people can't help how their face is. My mama mama taught me a lesson on that. She told me, she said, I can't help it that I can't smile. I never learned how to smile when I was younger. And that's a whole other class. But she said she could not help the way her facial expression was. See, that woman there, the Samaritan woman, Jesus was just himself. He just showed up in town and he was thirsty. See, that woman was thirsting after Christ before she even knew that was him. So whenever they had a conversation, she gave him a godly conversation because it was in her heart. It was in her heart, but she let him know up front that, hey, we're not supposed to be talking together because we're from two different sides. And that's when he let her know that anytime you drink the water of, of the living God, you are... Um, going to re- reap eternal life and that with all this other stuff, it don't even matter. So when you get to the point in life where stuff starts building up in your head and you can't focus and you can't sleep at night, that's the time you got to examine yourself to see if you are still in the faith. And I think I have a scripture on that as well. Examine yourself to see if you're still in the faith, to see if you're still walking in the truth of what you know to be really true and not the things that people are putting in your head. Um, Y'all give me a second here. Um, If you go with me to 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, this is Paul talking. This is Paul talking to the church. He's talking to the Corinthians, and he's basically telling them that, you know, you don't got to take my word for it. You don't got to believe me. But examine yourselves to see if you are trying to prove something to yourself. You know, examine yourselves to prove that you're not of yourself and that you are really walking in the faith. And sometimes when we stop walking in the faith, when we stop trusting God, we start leaning on people who don't mean us any good. We start believing in it and everything, and the next thing you know, (laughs) we find ourselves in trouble. We find ourselves caught up. So um, 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, um, let me find it. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, 
Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. Reprobate. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobate. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, Though we be a be as reprobate, y'all got this. This how I just read that because I got this little small, teeny, weeny Bible, and I don't have any glasses with me. But basically, what he is saying, you don't have to prove anything to people. Who you need to be trusting is in the Lord. And see, when people try to tell you, you know, stay in the truth. It's 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 a reason for that. When we stay in the truth, guess what? Lies can't hold us down. Lies can't hold us down when we stay in the truth. Another scripture is um, John 17 and 7, and this here helps us to clear our mind too. Um, John 17 and 7. I got sticky notes everywhere. <laughs> All right. Okay, so John 17 and Seven says, wait a minute, 1717. It's 1717, y'all. It says, sanctify them them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them, which means to set apart. Set them apart. If you find yourself overwhelmed and you're carrying too much on you, you got to sanctify. You got to sanctify yourself. You got to set yourself apart. Ask the Lord to help you set yourself apart from these things that's going on around you that is bringing you down. You know, I had to do that. And I'm not telling you that's an easy process because it's not. I had to do that. I had to say, Lord, set me apart from them. Because some of the things they're saying is not right. And I know it's not right. And I feel it in my heart. And when he separated me from them, it was the best thing that I could ever get, and that was freedom. That's how I freed up my mind, and I was able to go on and do the things that I needed to do, not only for me, but myself, and to help other people. People say, how can you go through and help other women that's um, going through cancer and stuff when your own mother is going through it? Well, that's the thing about it. You look to God. You look to God for all your strength. And that's where I find my strength is in the truth of on the days when I feel really horrible about it, let it out. Talk to God. Have a conversation and ask him to reveal anything that's inside of me that should not be and, and that's causing me to feel a certain type of way. What is some things that um what are some um, things that people say, you know, that cause you to kind of like be like, oh, I don't know if I need to be around them or not. You know, they sound good one minute and then the next minute, you know, um, they're kind of wavering in the face there. See, we have to be careful. We have to be careful of those that we let in our ear, in our head. And, and because we already know people ain't going to always come to us with the truth. So how to overcome, these are just some techniques right here that I'm just going to give you a few of things that you can do to help clear your thought process um, along with prayer, um, your meditation, and your um, talking to God. When you feel like you're overthinking, just ask yourself this question, does this really matter? Will it really matter five years from now? How about a month from now? Will I still remember that you didn't take that milk out or you didn't lay that food out on time so I could cook it? You know, will I still remember that? Is it worth remembering? You know, you got to ask yourself these questions because when you overthink things, and and that's basically what um, obsessive thinking is basically what's happening when you find yourself so with so many thoughts coming at you, it's obsessive thinking. So when when you overthink things, what ends up happening is you blow up the problem bigger than you do God. And you either become stagnant 
or you become fearful, you start losing your 